Hello and welcome. It is time once again to try to fix something and today in the workbench we're going to be trying to repair some PS5 power supplies. Um, I bought both of these from the same vendor. Non-working. These are ADP 400 FRs. Both of them. And they don't work. And the seller even admitted that they were killed by cockroaches. So, at least they were open and honest about it. So, let's see if that's actually true or not. But um, I got both these from the same um, seller. And then I picked up another one. Another broken ADP 400 FR. So let's see if we can fix all three of these in one video. How's that sound? Um, we'll start with number one. And I need to say off the top here that Please don't open up your power supplies if you're not familiar with working on these things. There, there's high voltage in here, and it can hurt you and it can kill you. So don't do it. Um, but I will be taking these covers off, and I'll, I'll bring you back whenever I get the covers off of number one. How's that sound? All right, I've taken the screws out of number one and got to looking at it, and I see this, this uh, AC input connector is a little bit crooked there. And I think I see some pry marks right along in there. So someone's had this one open. Thought I heard something rolling around. Never mind. Let me, let me just confirm that it doesn't work. I'm rather sure it doesn't. No output voltage. No smoke either, though. Okay, let me get these covers off. All right, I've got the covers off this first one. And yeah, sure enough, a, a roach body did fall out right over here. Well, there he is. Put him to the side. I think his work is done. And of course, in here you can see a little explosion mark. And in here, I have to get you into the microscope. I'm pretty sure I see a hole in our DAP 53. Uh, so let's switch to the microscope right quick, like, take a look. Yep, we have a hole in it. And all the magic smoke has been released. And as you know, all electronics work off of smoke. Because when the smoke comes out, they don't work anymore. Uh, here's a Zener diode that's also blown. And I think I recognize that Zener diode in that circuit. If it's the one I think it is. It's part of a divider. I'm trying to follow it. Yeah, right down through here. Oh, maybe that's not the one I'm thinking about. I was thinking there was this divider right here. This looks like where the explosion took place right here next to this divider which is two seven and a half mega ohms I'm trying to remember if that's all there is to it but I'm pretty sure this is the voltage uh, feedback I think for the power factor corrector if I'm remembering correctly let's just see don't want to tell you wrong. I'm trying to see what it's hooked to. And what pin it goes into to that DAP53. I believe this is ground at this end. Let me get it in the shot. And this end is going into pin of the DAP53. So let me look that up so I don't tell you wrong as to what that input is. Okay, consulting with my notes, I have confirmed that yeah, pin 2 is the boost sense input. So this is normally monitoring 400 volts. Not directly, through a divider right up here. Normally you'd have like 395 volts when it's running. 
through here through this resistor that's where somebody a, a roach has stepped in there comes through here run around through here and as you can see it splits right here let's look at this path though this zener is supposed to limit it zd37 that's an 8.2 volt zener i do have some of these because we're going to need one and then you have a resistor here which is a pretty high value resistor i can't remember pretty large though it usually doesn't get damaged and there's a capacitor which could be damaged but it looks pretty healthy and we go into pin two and that's where our hole is right there nearby let's go follow up the rest of the way though back this way it also goes down here the zero ohm jumper right here to this little uh, tiny MOSFET and this thing is very common to go bad also this is a 2N7002 and it has uh, seen better days so we need one of those I have those on hand and if we follow I think right under here over here right up to here that's connected to this uh, opto isolator and this could be damaged so I have to keep that in mind it could be damaged as well but to start with let's replace what we know and we'll go from there we'll start with this DAP 53 All right, well, we have replaced the DAP53. We replaced uh, an 8.2 volt Zener diode, and we have replaced the uh, 2N7002 MOSFET. Uh, but have we got everything? Uh, I hope so. The fuse was not blown. This fuse blow resistor was not open. These, these MOSFETs seem fine. Didn't find anything else bad, so maybe that's all. I'm connected to my load. We're set for uh, a 6 amp constant current. Let's see what happens, shall we? Nothing. 
Absolutely nothing. Okay. So something else is holding us off. Hmm. Okay. We still got something else bad. All right. Well, I think I have found another problem. If I can show you. Um, this auto isolator, which I, I think I mentioned earlier, is connected to that same circuit. And it, um, I, I thought it might likely be bad. Um, this is all part of a shutdown circuit, by the way. It's, well, not all of it. I should say is that, um, um, I don't know if I've gone over that before or not, but these, um, where are the resistors? But these resistors, get it in focus, are part of a, uh, a voltage divider, a feedback. Here, here, all the way down through here. Anyway, uh, there's a zener to limit it. Um, and this other path it takes is over here to this MOSFET. And what turns this MOSFET on? Well, let me just say, the purpose of this is to keep your boost voltage at 395 volts you know plus or minus a few percentage whatever um, pretty tight though 395 volts so that's the that's the purpose of it and that connects you know to a zener to ground to limit it to pin 2 of this IC but another feature of this chip is if you pull this to ground it's a shutdown signal and that's why this goes over here over here to this zero ohm jumper across there to this MOSFET. So when this MOSFET is turned on, uh, this other side is ground, I believe, uh, right down here. Yeah, well, if I can keep everything in focus and in the shot. Um, you short that voltage, that feedback voltage going into that IC to ground. And if it loses that feedback, it shuts down. Immediately, it just shuts down. And so what does this connect to? Uh, right over. What turns on that MOSFET is this opto-isolator right here. And this opto-isolator, if we measure across it, you notice I've lifted one leg right down here on the bottom. I've lifted one leg. So you should be able to measure across this and be pretty much infinite. This is the uh, collector emitter you know, side of the opto-isolator. The LED is on this side where pin 1 is, pin 1 and 2. And this is the, uh, should be, I think this is the collector and this is the emitter. If we go across that, 60k ohms with no bias, you know, whatsoever. This should be infinite. So this thing has broken down. So let's go ahead and change that out. Hope I had all that in the shot. If not, I'll do it again. 60k ohms. Right across there with this lead lifted so yep we have a bad opto isolator but we have a new one right here ready to be installed identical so let's go ahead and do that right right quick like if we could I'm just going to take this solder off with a little bit of wick. That's how I like to do it. And I will pop that leg up. And this one over here. And of course, like the other, a lot of the other components on this board, they are, it's still glued down. It's still not going to just fall right off. And I imagine they're glued down so they don't move when they go through the uh, reflow oven. So let's just pop that off. Pop our new one on there. Well, 
way too large of a tip for this, but whatever, it's what's what I have ready. And there we are. And if we check now, across there, what do we read? Yeah, 100k ohms or so in climbing. So now, where she will she work? Let me clean that up a little. Just a little. I didn't use a whole lot of flux. There's a roach leg rolling around there. We can get rid of that. All right. Is that going to do it? Let me get you reset up so we can check it out. All right, now that our opto oscillator has been changed, what, what will she do? Get ready to turn some power on, and nothing. Absolutely nothing. There is still something wrong with this thing. Mm. All right, I think we have found another problem, if I can show you. Pin 15 of this IC, the DAP53, is measuring 45 ohms to ground. And if we follow where this connects to, like it goes under this resistor, it goes to this capacitor, we see that same 45 ohms. And we go on down to, let me get my ground connection again, a zener right here. 45 ohms and this end is ground so there's not a lot else connected here there's this there's a capacitor which is a uh, not connected to ground on one side so I think our zener is dead it's it's marked uh, I think it's marked H2 Let me make sure this is in focus it's not going to show up too well I know but it's a Zener marked H2. If we go right across it, you'll see it's measuring 45 ohms right across it there. So what is that? I think... I'm not sure. I think I'm going to have to get another board out and check on that just to confirm uh, the, it's a Zener, I'm sure, of, but I don't know because you can tell it's a Zener because it says uh, ZD36, you know, right there. But oh, I need to know its exact value. I don't think I have one of those. I don't think I've ever had one of those fail. But uh, let me see if I can figure out what that is and get one coming so we can continue with this repair. All right, so where are we now on this power supply? Um, we had a bad Zener diode, and I didn't recognize the markings on that Zener diode. But uh, I was able to look at this board, which um, hopefully if you've seen my previous video, this is the uh, ADP 400 FR supply that I could not fix because of a bad uh, uh, DNP 014. Uh, anyway, this is going to become a parts donor, at least temporarily. Um, I have Zeners ordered for this one, but they won't be in it tomorrow, and I want to go ahead and get this one fixed. But um, so, and this one is marked. Uh, ZC on this board and ZC as we can see here in this list is a 7.5 volt Zener right here so anyway so for reference it's a seven and a half volt Zener but I'm going to pull it from here uh, right about uh, there is it yeah or is it there no it's that one that one right there I'll pull that one from this board and I want to show you something else though under the microscope. I was looking at this thing when I was uh, looking around that Zener diode. If I can get my microscope to work. Let me show you something. There's where the Zener, you know, will go when I when I get one off this other board. But look right up here at this capacitor. C34. Does it look like it's got a crack in it? Yeah. 
It doesn't seem to be shorted, but I don't trust it. So I'll go ahead and pull the capacitor off this donor board as well, and we'll replace that. So, yeah, that doesn't look too good. Just noticed that while I was looking around in this area. So, ZD36 and C34 will come off that donor, and we'll see if that'll fix our supply. Our Zener diode and our capacitor have been replaced, pulled from our donor board over there. So we're ready to test this supply. I've got my uh, load set up over there for six amps. Let's just see what happens when we give it power. There we go. 12 volts, looks good. All right, I think our first supply, supply number one, has been repaired. Um, let's move on to the next one. All right, moving on to supply number two. I've already pried the cover off of it. And I was not the first one to pry the cover off of it. And there's a dead roach laying on top. That's nice. But I knew these were, these were all these, well, these one and two, number one and two were both from the same vendor, and they both said they were roach, roach damage. So I knew that. Can't complain about that. 
but I'm surprised they're not heavily roach damaged. I mean, I've seen some that were just nasty. But this, this this seems like in both these supplies, a single roach got in there and destroyed the supply. Um, let's check our filter capacitors and see if it's if they're charged up. I don't think I've applied power to this one though, so really should not be put charged up at all. No, nothing there. All right. How about we go to continuity mode? How's our fuse? Fuse is good. How is our fusible resistor? Not good. Well, I bumped the leads. So we have a shorted MOSFET. Yes. 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 And yes. So yeah, both MOSFETs are shorted. The resistor is open. All very common. If we're lucky, it didn't blow the DAP53. But it might have. Sometimes when these MOSFETs go, if they, you know, if you have a short to the gate, then it kind of can go back into the the driver I see and pop that. So I think what I'll do though is I may uh, go ahead and pull these shorted MOSFETs off and then maybe we'll do some diode checks looking into this chip, you know. Probably should limit any, sh any shorts I can in the beginning and then we'll, you know, chase any other remaining shorts. Right now that those shorted MOSFETs <clears throat> are out of the circuit, let's do a quick check uh, in diode mode on our DAP53, pin 1, that doesn't look too bad, 2, 3, 4 is ground I believe, 5, 6, 7 I think is no connect, 8 looks right. 8 and 9 both have these really high you know, over 1 volt diode readings. I'm not getting it on 9. I have to make a note of that. 10, 11. Hmm. I don't remember 11 ever being that high. Should be 0.521. Is that because we have our MOSFETs out? I'm not sure. But something to make a note of. 11 doesn't look right. 12, I think there's no connection. 13, 14, 15, 16. That all looks right except, like I said, really 9 does not look right. 9 usually has a reading of like 1.1. 1 .1. 10 is about right. 1.12 is what I have. Uh, that's 11. That does not look right at all. Hmm, I wonder what that connects to. Because some of these outputs may be going to these MOSFETs, but there's usually some stuff in between anyway. There's, there'll, there'll be a Zener, uh, like a Zener or a diode and resistor combination. Uh, but it could be because I'm, yeah, that could be because I'm missing those things. Let me see what, uh, specifically let's see what 11 is. If I can find some notes to that effect. All right, that is the uh, what they call the half bridge connection, which I think connects between these two MOSFETs. So that's probably normal since we have the MOSFETs out. Anything else? 
this little MOSFET down here, Q34 has been uh, troublesome in the past. But today seems to be perfectly fine. She's not shorted. That's good. Kind of expecting very light damage on this one. I mean, there's no there's no burn marks that I, that I noticed. It just I think something stepped, you know, in the wrong spot and uh, turned on our MOSFETs hard, and they, you know, they shorted and opened the resistor. That's what I think happened. Let me get those MOSFETs replaced, and let's just we'll go through our, our diode checks again. Those changed out. New MOSFETs in there. New resistor. What do what does our diode readings look like now? Uh, let's see. Pin um, uh, nine was weird. I remember that looks normal now. Ten eleven was also a strange. All right, that looks normal. So after changing out or installing our our uh, MOSFETs in there and the resistor, these readings look normal. There is no short across the uh, main large filter caps, which are which are you know discharged. I have not applied power to it yet, so and let's make sure there's no short on the output. Let's just capacitors charging up there. We are in diode mode, so so no no short. I'll put it in resistance, and you can see. Yeah, and the mega ohms just. A lot of capacitors there to try to charge up whenever you uh, stick your meter in there. Hmm. All right, I think this one's ready to test. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's ready to test. Let's get you set up where you can see the test. All righty, our load is connected. She's still on. Um, let's see what happens. Give it some AC. And there she goes working just like it should excellent excellent so that was a quick and simple one there just uh, some MOSFETs and the refusable resistor easy okay I'm gonna do a little cleanup on this one maybe and uh, make sure there's no roach remnants and we will move on to number three how's that sound all right number three I've already pried the top off I can already see where something has uh, left a burn mark in here right across a couple of capacitors right here. don't really see a... Oh, I do see an explosion mark right in here. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up, but right in there is where the uh, bug became deceased. Yeah, none of these supplies... Oh, this is from this is a third. This was a separate uh, vendor, but this one is also going to be roach damage. I mean, it's like one or two roaches though, so I really can't complain about that. It's not like you're, you know, just crawling with them. So, huh? So yeah, I do see a little scorch mark right there. So we know where he crawled, and sometimes that's helpful. <laughs> Gives you a place to start. But I am going to start at the beginning with the fuse. Fuse. Good. Fusible resistor is good. MOSFETs do not appear to be shorted. Well, what's the problem with this thing then? 
I have not plugged it up. I mean, I have not confirmed that it doesn't work. I'm assuming the seller was not lying. Okay, so no obvious shorts. Although I think I see a mark on that DAP 53. Is that a burn mark I'm seeing? Get out of the microscope if you can. I'm not sure if you can show up, if it'll show up on camera, but anyway. Right about there. There's a mark. But I can't tell if it's just some garbage or if it's a, a hole. Let's, let's get the microscope fired up. And we'll find out in a hurry, won't we? Well, it's not a hole. It's just some nastiness. I don't think that's a hole. Let's see if that'll clean off. Or is it a melted spot? Hmm. That may be a melted spot. Let's just see if I go to diode mode. And get my negative probe right here. That looks normal. That looks normal. Normal? That's ground. I mean, it looks a little weird, but... But these diode readings... Wait, I think I spoke too soon. Yeah, that's not normal. What pin is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 reads shorted to ground. Uh, I'm not sure what 14 connects to. Looks like it goes to this zero ohm jumper right here and then it runs around the world. Goes under there, it splits and goes up that way. Let's follow it this way. Oh, there's where there's where the part of the what's left of the uh roach. Hmm. Oh I'm so I'm guessing that these capacitors must be shorted. I saw that burnt mark, but I didn't realize it had, you know, really damaged those capacitors right there. Let's see if I can get those in focus. C12, C13. No short. No short. But they don't look too healthy at all. So what is shorted in this area? Okay. Let's go back. Go back to where it all began. Let me find my ground connection. Got it. So, right here. Underneath these resistors. And then it splits and goes. Let's just follow this trail path going up. Under here, under here, right there. Yes. And then onto a capacitor here. And that's ground there. And is that, okay, that must go. Where does that go? Disappears up under the IC here. Doesn't go to pin one because pin one is not shorted. Yeah, whatever that is, just scraped off. So it's not a hole in the chip there. So, what is it? Somewhere I think I have a picture of, you know, what's under this chip, because I can't remember. That trace 
disappears up under there. Not going over there. Hmm. Let me see. Let me get to uh, continuity mode. Let me know this out because I want to know if that happens to be ground. Maybe we can tell. So, is this in ground? Yeah, 0, 0.00. And this end is 2.9 ohms. So, this is ground. And we have basically a 3 ohm short to ground right up here. We still don't know where this goes. Wherever it goes, though, we should read 3 ohms. Nope. Hmm. Very confusing. Here. Three ohm short. Of course, what I may have to do is just lift this. Just see if it's on this side of this jumper or on the other side. Let's just go ahead and do that. Take some of the guesswork out. Is it the chip? All right. Now where is our short? It is the chip. No short on this side. So yeah. I think we do have a bad chip. Not sure what else may be bad, but we'll start with that. Make sure you can see it. Sorry. Right there. Three and a half ohms, three point three ohms. Ten fourteen. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Is that right? No, I can't count. How many pins does this thing have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14.
All right, well, our DAP53 has been changed right here. And I reinstalled that jumper where we were isolating that part of the circuit earlier. And I went ahead and changed out both these capacitors, but the C12 and C13 from a donor, those measure, I think it was 47 nanofarad. Um, they also look like they're probably pretty high voltage. But I changed those out from the donor. And we're ready to see now if we've done any good whatsoever. Get my uh, load connected. All right, clarity is correct. Load is on. Uh, AC power. Just got to turn on this power switch to see what happens. Nothing. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I didn't wait long enough. That looks good. Looks totally fine. All right, number three is repaired. Um, well, excellent. Uh, let me do some more tests, and uh, maybe we can wrap this up. All right, well, there you have it. Three uh, ADP400 FR PS5 power supplies repaired. Uh, well, that was a fun one. And now I've got some spares, lots of spares. I like having spares on hand. It makes things so much easier. Well, if you liked that one, thought it was somewhat interesting and educational or funny or whatever, please give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in the very next repair. So long for now.